Good morning. I'm Pastor Mike Custer from Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It's Thursday morning, April 9th, 2020, and I'm so glad to be able to spend a few moments with you again this morning in devotions in the Word of God as you begin, hopefully begin your day. And the first thing in the morning is a good time. In fact, I think the best time to have a, a quiet time with the Lord in the Word of God, because that sets the tone for our day. And so it makes sense that we would start our day with the Lord. We talked yesterday morning for a few minutes about walking in the Spirit. And we read some verses from Galatians chapter 5 about how this is an option for all believers. It's not something God demands or, or uh, actually mandates for us. We have a choice in the matter. But it's a wise course, and it's the best course. It's the course of blessing that we would walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. If we walk in the flesh, uh, then there will be a price to pay. There is always negative associated with this, the lusts of the flesh and the sins of the flesh. And any kind of sin always brings a payday. Hebrews 11 spoke of Moses, who chose to... Uh, experience or endure the afflictions of the children of Israel and serve with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And the reality is that the devil makes sin pleasurable. It is enjoyable on some level for a few minutes or seconds, and then the pain comes, and then payday comes, and every child of God who has ever indulged in kind of in some kind of sin of the flesh, knows the conviction and the regret and the grief and the correction that the Heavenly Father brings in their, their life, it's much better, much more joyful for us just to walk in the Spirit, just to let the Lord be in control. This involves a number of things, and I'd like for us to consider what happens when we walk in the Spirit. Well, one thing that happens is that we will experience victory in our life, uh, when we surrender to God and let the Lord have his way in our life, we'll have victory. Some people just struggle and struggle and struggle with the flesh. And the Bible would indicate to us that when we yield to the Lord, we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. We can have victory in our personal life. It requires honest humility on our part. We have to be willing to honestly humble ourselves and say, look, I understand what I am and come clean uh, with the Lord and sometimes with, with somebody else. Sometimes accountability is necessary because it's something that has seized, seized such a hold on, on the life and on the individual that they just need to humble themselves before others and get some help uh, besides them just humbling themselves before God, which may be easier to do anyway, because he, he already knows. He already knows. But rejoicing will be the result of that kind of honest humility. And when we, when we truly yield and surrender and we honestly humble ourselves before the Lord and sometimes before others, God will give us victory and we can live and walk under the control of the Spirit of God. A little bit later in this chapter, we read uh, the difference, the contrast between the flesh and the spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. The Bible says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And he goes on and describes the fact that these people who live this way as a lifestyle are demonstrating by their life that they are not really saved. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But then the very next verses say, but the fruit of the Spirit, verse 22 and following, what the Holy Spirit generates in life, if he's allowed to be in control, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and these are adversely and diametrically opposed to the works of the flesh, but they are the fruit of the Spirit. They're not the works of the Spirit, but they are the fruit of the Spirit, what the Spirit of God naturally produces in the life of a believer who decides 
that he will yield to the Lord or she will yield to the Lord day by day and experience the, the, the power of the Spirit of God, of the person of God in that individual's life. And we've read the fruit of the Spirit and, and love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance are all listed among these nine. And the fact of the matter is, the, the chapter says we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh if we will walk in the Spirit. What a blessing to have the privilege to have victory over our old wicked flesh. What a blessing it is to have the indwelling Spirit of God so that we don't have to be captives, we don't have to be slaves anymore to our old sin nature, the nature with which we were born. We can have victory. We can live and, and be able to uh, overcome, be able to endure and have victory over those temptations that always seem to come as a result of our old sinful nature. What a blessing God has provided for us in the uh, gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit to all believers. And may God help you today to be surrendered to the Lord, to, to exercise honest humility and submit to him and to yield to God so that he might accomplish his purpose and give you power to be and to do what he desires that you would be. God bless you today.